Hi, I'm Cody Anderson, one of the pastors here at Parker United Methodist Church. We are in the middle of a sermon series where we are thinking about who we are called to be as the people of God. And we're focusing on John Wesley's three simple rules. These rules that John Wesley put in place to help people understand who they were called to be as the people of God. So last week we talked about rule number one, which was do no harm. And as we unpacked that simple rule, we realized that it's not really that simple. You see, most of us start off our day thinking about the ways in which we are not going to do harm towards others. That is our intention for the day. And yet many of us find ourselves in places and in systems that we actually do cause harm. And so what does that look like for us? This simple rule that is more in depth and sometimes harder to live out. This week, Pastor Laura started us off on thinking about the second rule, which is do good. Now, do good, just like do no harm, sounds really simple at first, right? I can wake up in the morning and I can try to set my intention of doing good. But actually, that can be really hard because what does that mean in our world? We're really good at having a list of things not to do, but having a list of things to do uh, uh, that are good, uh, uh, ways that we can live that out in the world, that's a little bit harder for us to come up with. So I wanted to start off with a story. A story about a little boy who is 11 years old. One day he is busy playing games online with his friends and his dad comes in and asks him if he's busy. Well, of course the 11 year old says that he is busy and his dad sees what he's doing and says, no, you're not busy, come help me for a little bit. And so the little boy goes and starts to help his dad. And what they're doing is unloading all of this dirt, a pickup load full of dirt into garden boxes that have been built. And as they're unloading this dirt, shovel by shovel, it is hard work. And the little boy asks, why are we doing this? I don't want to do this. This is not something that is fun for me. And the dad replies, son, this is not something that is fun for me to do either. And so the little boy again says, then why? Why, dad, are we doing this? And the dad began to reflect on that question. He thought about how for him, gardening was not something that he loved to do. That picking the weeds and tending to the soil and planting the seeds and harvesting things, that was not something that he was passionate about or loved but his wife was. The boy's mother loved to garden. It was one of her happy places and happy things to do. And so the dad looked at his son and he said, we do it because we love your mom and your mom loves to garden. And so even though we're not passionate about doing it, this is the way that we show love. So a couple days later, the mom comes into the house and she asks her 11 year old son if he can help her for a minute. And without hesitation, that little boy stops doing what he's doing and he goes out and he starts helping her in the garden beds. And when the dad shows up, the mom is telling him about how their son had helped her. And he had said, I do this mom because I love you. So I've been thinking about that story, right? It's really easy for us to do good for the people that we love. When we think about our own families, we know things that they're passionate about, ways in which we can do good for them. Maybe it's as simple as throwing in a load of laundry for my children as they are running out the door. Maybe it's something as easy as a home cooked meal for my parents. Maybe it is something as easy as calling and scheduling an appointment that I know that my husband Jason does not want to call and do, right? We know how to do good for the people that we love. Is that easy for you? It's sometimes hard, right? Because we have things that we want to do. And doing good for those that we love means we have to set aside our own agendas, our own comfort, and do good for them. But it's a way that we show that we love them. 
Well, as Christians, we know that we are called to not only love those who we love, those who are family and friends, but we are called to love everyone, including our enemies. And that's where do good takes a different turn. See, we think about doing good as a way of showing love for somebody else. So how can we do good in our world to show love to even those that we don't even know, even those that we might think of as enemies? In John, um, the third letter of John, in chapter 11, it says, whoever does good is from God. So we know that we are called to do good, that that is the way of God at work in the world, doing good. But as we think about what that looks like to do good, really it's choosing um, a, a way of living that is proactive. It's this proactive way of doing good in the world, of making a difference, of consciously setting aside our own agenda and our own um, ways that we want to control things and doing for others. So sometimes when we hand out um, stuff for homeless people, I hear people say to us, why are you giving um, those people stuff that they don't really need? right? Um, that they're just going to use in the wrong way, that they're just going to throw away. When I look at my unhoused friends, my unhoused neighbors, I think about this story of the Good Samaritan. And I believe it was Martin Luther King Jr. who said, you know, I'm not concerned about what happens to me if I help. I'm concerned more about what happens to my neighbor, what happens to them if I don't. So our job is to be obedient to God, to do good in the world, to be able to live out in this way that shows God's love. And it's not about how others are gonna take it. Sometimes we're gonna be ridiculed for what we do if we're doing good. Sometimes we're gonna feel like someone's taking advantage of us. Sometimes doing good means that we don't get to control the situation. But if we are being obedient to the ways that God is calling us to do good, then we are exactly who we are supposed to be. We are living out our calling as the people of God. So on Sunday at Spark Service, I put out a prayer board. And one of the things that I put out was this thing of ways that we are called to do good. So if you remember in our children's time, Miss Noelle had a bucket of water and she had the kids hold on to a rock and to drop that bucket into the water and to see the ripples and how the ripples go out from this one good thing, this one spot, and they go out into the entire um, bucket. And she was talking about how the ways in which we do good as the people of God, that helps um, spread out across the world, across communities. So some of the things that people wrote here on this called to good, the ways in which they feel called um, to do good in the world is, um, to do a relay for life, to be involved in those types of missions, to help the church with, um, with their talents and gifts. So being able to put into work what they are called to do, helping those who are unhoused, sharing a kind word with somebody else. These are just a few of the ways in which people are realizing that they can do good in the world. Sometimes it can be this really grand gesture, this huge way of being involved in a mission like Secor Cares and going and helping pack up, um, helping stock the carts for people who are taking those groceries home. Or sometimes it's something really little, really simple, like just being kind, opening a door for someone, noticing somebody else, picking up stuff that has fallen from someone. What are the ways in which you can do good? Both those little moments, but also those larger pieces as well. 
we know that Jesus came to this world to serve others. And as disciples of Jesus, as people who are followers of Jesus's teachings and the way in which he lived his life, we are called to serve as well. So what are the ways in which we can do good? Both little things and huge that will create these ripples of goodness throughout our communities and our world. One little action of good can change the world. So how are you called to do good? As we wrestle with this question this week, let us be open to the ways in which God is calling us as disciples of Jesus to do good, to love others, to put that into action, not just loving those who we know, who are our loved ones, our friends, but also loving those who we don't know, loving those who maybe even are our enemies. How are we called as the people of God to do good that creates ripples of goodness in life throughout our communities and our world?